Hey guys, how's it going? So today we're gonna to be working on some boxwood trimming. I've got a lot of it to do because we've done very little hedging and trimming this year. In fact, it was one of those things this spring that I just kind of had to let go. We had a lot going on, brand new baby. And you know, there were some areas of the, the hedges that I thought might actually benefit from us allowing them to grow out a little bit. A year and a half ago, we had a cold snap in October. Um, so we were trimming kind of late anyway, but it was really nice weather. We trimmed the boxwood hedges and then we had a kind of freak nine degree night. It was so cold so fast and it killed like several inches off the top of a lot of our hedges. And a lot of them, like even though we trimmed last year, they were still kind of struggling to rebound from that. So I think it was a good thing just to leave them alone for a little while. And the general rule when you're hedging something is just to make sure that it's not during a really harsh time of the year. Because what you're doing when you're hedging is you're taking off the growth that is used to the sun. It's used to seeing the sun and used to the wind and all of that. And you're exposing all of that tender undergrowth. So if it's harsh, like if I did it when it was 105 degrees to a shrub that's in the full sun, it would probably suffer some burn. But our weather is so nice right now and so long as we don't have a really weird cold snap or a really hot warm up, I think the hedges will do great. And you'll find instructions I think all over the board uh, in terms of hedging when you should do it. I think it depends on where you live and what your climate's like. For us, typically we do a spring prune and then a late summer early fall prune. Uh, so anyway, I've got some of the hedges behind me. In fact, I kind of just want to walk around and show you everything that needs to be done. So first off, we have all of the sprinter boxwoods along the west side on both sides of the driveway. So we've got the little configuration here. You can see they're kind of light colored right now because they had spider mites so bad last year. They're still recovering. They had a bit of it this year. I think they'll bounce out. And then we've got these boxwoods here, all the spheres around the garden. That one there, there are four in containers, two here, two on the other side, and then two in the containers right up front. We've got the four spirals in front of the barn. Then we've got these, the little spheres here, which are not bad because I actually did a little tiny bit of pruning this summer. And it was kind of an experiment. I thought, you know what, if I don't take them all the way down into their old growth, but I just kind of tighten up a little bit of their fluffy new growth and don't expose that undergrowth, they should do okay, and they really did. I'm super thankful. These are in shade a little bit more than our other shrubs though, or our other hedges rather. We've got these leading to the fireplace. These right here, these going away from the fireplace. We have all of these spheres here, but I'm gonna skip these because we're gonna be digging these and moving them out somewhere else because as you know, this whole area is gonna be changing. We have all of these around this corner garden. This fountain, we just tore apart to clean it. We've gotta put it back together. But they span all the way around this space. I've got one that's looking like it's dead right here. We'll deal with that later. And the cones back here. We've got all of these in the back formal garden, which this area is gonna be a beast. There's Nepeta planted in between, but the land actually slopes up. So the boxwoods on this half actually sit much higher in the ground than the ones down here. And for some reason, it's always hard to get them leveled up right. These always end up being a little bit lower. All of these, those around the urn, and then they go all the way around this way. There's also a little section that wraps around the backside of this flower bed and the cones. So I've got a lot to do. I am not gonna mess around with trying to move a sheet or a tarp around to catch all of the trimmings. I'm just gonna trim. I'm gonna trim them all and then we'll go back through and we'll pick up all of the excess. We may even just let some of them stay in the flower beds and we'll just mulch on top of them and let them compost. <laughs> and here's a close up of how the spirals look in front of the barn. Just clean the annuals out from around them and they need to be tightened up quite a bit. And this is what tool I will be using today. This is the DeWalt hedge trimmer that has the 22 inch blade. Is that what you call it? Anyway, makes quick work of everything. Uh, if I need to, I'll come along with some head shears and just tighten stuff up. But I'm kind of looking just to get these done quickly and efficiently. All right, so here we go.
guys, well, that project took about three weeks to complete. I'm so used to our projects taking like at the most a day or two um, that this one was kind of uh, strange. Um, but you know, boxwood trimming, it takes a long time and it was very easy for me just to, cause they're so spread out everywhere. I just took one little section at a time and did it as I had time to do it. I still have like maybe a week to 10 days before we have a freeze. Um, so there are a couple sections I skipped near the kitchen. I'll show you. Uh, if I wanted to get those done, I think they would still be okay. But I did want to reiterate, it is a risk to trim this late. I'm not trimming super deep. I'm not doing a super precise deep trim on these. It was just wanting to get them cleaned up a little bit and tightened up so that we have some really nice winter structure. And the fact that we haven't trimmed them all year, it felt really good just to give them a little bit of attention. So I'm going to start in the back formal garden where I ended and we'll kind of work our way backwards. I really love how these turned out. Oh, we need to clean up a little bit more around these. I didn't have time. I was kind of in a rush. So I need to go through and kind of pick out the clippings. I did a kind of general job and then the, um, tree here is dropping leaves so it drops leaves over on top of all of these boxwoods so we have to kind of keep up on that so they don't settle down in the shrub uh, but this area is super interesting because the land right here is way higher than it is over here on the other side uh, so I have to leave these quite a bit taller than I do those. The very first time I pruned these, I didn't realize that there was such a huge difference in the land and I pruned them wrong <laughs> because I usually with my hedge trimmers, I find a place on my leg and kind of like anchor the hedge trimmer to my leg. And that's the level I keep it at for whichever project I'm doing. And that, that spot will change depending on if I need it higher or lower or whatever. Um, so I just found a spot on my leg and that's what I did. I did the whole thing. And then I stood back and looked and was like, oh, Oh, it looked like the these back here were about a foot shorter or almost a foot shorter than the ones um, up on the other end. It was really bad and it's taken. I mean, they still haven't fully grown. They're the same level now, pretty close, but they're a lot thinner on this side than they are on the other side, which is such a bummer. Now, professionals usually use a string which I don't do. I mean, you can put stakes up, run a string, and that way you can make sure everything is level and precise. I'm kind of just of the mindset of like, like they'll grow back, <laughs> get it done, get it good enough and move on. It's a lot faster. I tried strings once. I have no patience <laughs> for that sort of thing. Also, I did not hop in the center this time because they're not super woolly in there. Not yet. And there's Nepeta just blooming its head off and there were honeybees all over in there. I didn't want to really disrupt that. So I decided I'll just leave that until spring and I'll hop in there and tighten those up at that point. Okay, next spot. I'm going to try to cruise because it is evening and we're losing light. Okay, triangle garden turned out pretty good. Everything looks pretty nice. Now there are a couple areas where I have replaced boxwoods along the way, right here. And I replaced two right here at one point. So you can see the difference in how they've grown, um, how much thinner they are in those spots, but they will fill in. There's some like little gumdrops right here I trimmed up. This side looks horrid, horrid, horrid. I'm not sure what's going on because all the plants in this area, tree, there's some roses and some alliums, they do great, but the box was just languish. So I don't think it's a water issue. These were here when we moved in and they had big dead spots in them when we moved in. In fact, this one, I kind of tried to limp along and eventually we dug it out. I just haven't replaced it because this whole area may change. We're thinking of figuring out a way to incorporate this space into the back garden because it's a very confusing area. Our driveway comes in straight right here. So most people think, well, I just need to keep cruising straight. And then they end up in this weird corner and have to turn this way when, you know, just going with the curve is the easiest way to go. But I can see where that would be confusing. And I would probably, if I didn't know, go straight as well. Um, so we were thinking, well, what if we took from right here and got rid of all the gravel right back behind my hand and then curved it? all the way over to about where that arb is and incorporated all of this into the back garden got rid of all the gravel maybe did some berming up in the back uh, create a nice big evergreen barrier right there i don't know we've got some plans in the works aaron would have it all torn up right now if he could but i kind of just want to leave it for now and we can think about it over the winter these are the two established boxwood hedges that i trimmed um, that were here the rest of the boxwoods i think were all planted by us. You know, they were privets, privet hedging when we moved in. Horrible, horrible, <laughs> almost dead, huge overgrown privet hedging. Um, we had all of those pulled out and we planted boxwoods in their place. And so a lot of them uh, are just feeling like they're like a hedge, I guess. I don't know, like they have matured a bit. 
This is one of the areas I skipped because I did prune these midsummer. They are a little wooly, but they still have form. And honestly, I only really wanted to trim up the ones that were horribly bad, like horribly overgrown. I don't really want to risk any damage uh, for no really good reason. These are pretty nice. I say that right now, but if I get a chance in the next day or two, I'll probably tighten them up a bit. Same with these right here. Do you remember the privet hedging, you guys? For those of you who haven't seen those older videos, the privets left us like this much walking space. They were so tight and so, oh, they're just so bad. <laughs> so love these boxwoods. I also left these alone, spheres and this one. These don't see very much sun, so they don't grow enormously fast. They're a tiny bit woolly, but not bad. They look pretty good. And the spheres grew hardly at all after I trimmed them. Don't those look awesome? I love them. Those were here when we moved in, the spheres. And then there was a statue of a librarian lady. She was very pretty. All right, coming out of that area, there are two spheres on either side of the vegetable garden. They look the same pretty much, but I got those trimmed up as well as all the cones, which are a different variety from the hedge boxwood. So these are a sprinter, these are a green mountain. And I love, you can see the green mountains kind of popping up. Once those get a little bit bigger, that's gonna be so neat to see that color variation. Of course, the sprinters will look darker green too once we get the spider mites under control. They had spider mites horribly bad last year and then struggled with them a little bit this year. Uh, we're gonna spray again this fall and then start in preventatively next spring. We thought we would do that this year and we just let it slip through the cracks. There was just so much going on. So anyway, we're hoping to rebound those because they are looking so good. I am loving this whole area. I did also trim the spheres in the urns just a little bit, but I just love it. The structure. Oh, so pretty. And as we get to the end of this area, I had actually stopped with this box. What is the last one? And then had this whole area planted up with annuals last year. Well, this year we decided to carry on the boxwood hedge. So those are babies. They were planted this year. And then we did transplant two boxwood cones from either side of the gazebo to either side of this walkway. They looked awesome, uh, but they didn't survive clearly. This one here died first and we hardly had any roots on that. You might remember it was like this huge boxwood and a little tiny disc of roots that had come up uh, when we tried to dig it out. So that one died, not surprisingly. And then this one here hung on for a long time and I was supplementing it with water, like really trying to treat it nice and it eventually just gave it up. So I do though, I don't know. It was such a huge, it was the same size as this one over here. It was such a huge piece right here. I kind of enjoy having it be more open. I don't know. And then on this side, I did get that cone kind of trimmed up a bit and then trimmed these a little bit as well. So we do intend on completing this hedge. Uh, what we're gonna do, this lilac is super, super old. There's a lot of dead in it. We've been kind of babying it. We trimmed out a bunch of stuff. We'll either take it down and let it grow back fresh or we'll just take it out altogether and try something different. At that point, we'll dig out some of this lamium and probably just scatter it back, to, back in this area. I love lamium. Um, and then we'll finish the boxwood hedge and finish the li little lime punch hedge, which you guys, these are, these have impressed me. These are amazing. Look at the color on the blooms. So that's more of a fresh bloom. Look at the fall color. Oh, oh, they are so pretty. They have performed so well. Okay, one more area. It's kind of feeling a little dark out here. I hope it's still bright enough. There's my pumpkin runway right there. Got this one done, still have to clean up. And then did a light trim on this right here as well as that side. And then the one right behind it, there is a boxwood hedge kind of tucked over. It's an interesting one. That one was actually here too. It was here when we moved in. So the picket fence continued on from right here and it went all the way around. Um, so we took that out. So there's like where there were certain fence posts, there's little holes uh, where the boxwood had kind of grown around the fence post. So this is looking a little ratty. This might come out. Um, from a distance, it doesn't look bad. And the, the top looks pretty good, but the sides need a chance to fill back in. These turned out really good though. Also got the sprinters trimmed around the urn. Uh, those had spider mites pretty bad this year as well. And then um, one of these got run over. This one right here got run over a little bit with one of the gators at one point. So we had a little bit of breakage there, not a big deal, but those are coming around looking good. And then last but not least, this hedge right here that goes all the way to the fence. 
they're all pretty short hedges at this point. I would kind of like them to be, oh, about like yay tall. And maybe like in this area, they could be maybe not twice as thick, maybe half again as thick. I think that would be nice and bulky enough for this area. But I'm really liking how they look. I did trim some of the juniper and some of the other shrubs up off of the boxwoods down here. So they were totally laying on top of them. And as I was walking around just now, I noticed a bunch that I missed. <laughs> Cones, spheres all over the place, but none of them were really that woolly. Uh, so if I happen to be doing some fall cleanup or whatever and want to tighten those up just a tiny bit, I'll probably do that. I just wanted to make sure the wooliest, most unkept looking ones were kind of handled before we get too far into the season uh, because the boxwood hedging around our house anyway, is it's an enormous part of our winter interest and I really wanted them to look nice. And it was a satisfying thing to do even though it took a little while. For us here in Eastern Oregon, boxwoods can be a tiny bit tricky. I mean, they grow well here. Um, they typically don't die. They do, do the best if you just plant them and leave them alone and don't put them under direct water because they get hard water stained really bad around here in our water so drip irrigation is kind of a must here otherwise they just look white and crusty uh, if you want to keep them in hedging uh, and or topiaries here it's a little bit difficult and of course it'll be different for everybody depending on your climate but we don't have a long window of very mild temperatures it's been gorgeous for the last few weeks so I have no complaints it's been beautiful uh, but we're typically either really hot really uh, cold or really windy, which is not conducive for keeping the tips of boxwoods looking really nice and lush and fresh. Uh, but you know, I, I think we're gonna do okay. I mean, I might be singing a different tune in a later video. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> with what I did over the last couple weeks. And the last thing is insect control. I know a lot of you guys deal with like boxwood blight, right? I don't even, we don't have that. Thankfully, we don't have deal with that. We do deal with the spider mite issue horribly bad here. So I think we're gonna be maybe taking a different approach possibly. Um, you do have to kind of change up what you're using on them because they're this type of insect that will morph and uh, will become resistant to whatever you're spraying on them. So you have to use uh, things with different active ingredients in it. Anyway, we'll share all of that with you as we kind of approach that uh, maybe later this fall and then next spring. So anyway, that's it for this video, you guys. We're kind of getting darkish out here. Also, it kind of looks like we're going to get a storm. I don't know if it looks like that in the camera. It's going to drop like 15, 16 degrees from today's high to tomorrow's high. So maybe we'll get some wind, possibly. Anyway, thanks for watching guys. We'll see you in the next one, bye. Also, can we just take a minute to appreciate this ash tree? Isn't that beautiful? I see this from my bedroom window and it just makes me so happy whenever I see that beautiful color. <sighs> October. <laughs>